Welcome to the Bergstrom Bunch Podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Kathy. And it's good to be back in studio. Yeah, it's been a minute since we've done one of these. Busy it's, season. It has been busy. We hosted a ninja competition in July, our, our biggest one ever, actually. Yeah. Well, when you're giving away a lot of money, people are happy to come visit you and compete helps, at yeah. your gym. Yeah, so for sure. No, but it's always like a family reunion every time we have some of these people come into town. So that was good. Yeah. And last weekend we were in Dallas, uh, cheering Caitlin on in World Chase Tag. Yeah. Fun times. That was a new experience. Yeah. Chase that's, tag that's is a fun a, sport. It's, so yeah, it's it a fun, different sport than ninja, but it was oh, it was awesome to watch. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. Got, got to explore Dallas a little bit, botanical yeah. gardens, and yeah. Uh, yeah, downtown Fort Worth. Fun yeah, stuff. fun times. But the recent highlight, right before Chase Tag, was of course Caitlin getting married. She looked amazing. Oh man, yeah, yeah. it's uh, our first baby girl to get married. Giving so away that the was, first girl, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. I, it's good though. It's good. Fun time. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the two of you had a pretty epic dance at the reception. That was with a your, lot of fun. With your, yeah, light up shoes and things. So anyway, people can go to Instagram and find some of that on yours and hers and mine and everybody's because it was just kind of the highlight reel, so to speak. So. <laughs> and the week after the wedding, yeah. of course, we got, well, we were supposed to get blasted by the hurricane. Yes, But we it, were. it veered south of us. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, devastated a lot of lives. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy. But, you know, one of the things that really stuck out to me during that whole time is all these young people that came together and just wanted to go down, make a difference, help help all these displaced people, bring food. And um, actually, that's why I'm, my, why I'm wearing my Electric Enzo shirt for this episode, because we are kind of cameoing. Um, just investing in young people and then young pe- young people then moving forward and investing in the lives of others. And honestly, like the hurricane just really encapsulated that. It was pretty amazing. We had a lot of our young people go down there and are still down there. Yeah. Up and out. Yeah. yeah. And even Enzo is still raising money um, to help those people as well because it was, it the, was the, pretty tragic. Uh, the need is still great. I mean, yes. it's they're, they're just starting out on the, this process of people rebuilding their lives. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Absolutely. But, you know, I think it's in those moments that as tragic as it is, when you see all these people coming together to make a difference and to care about their fellow human beings, it's, you know, it just warms the heart. It just makes you feel like, okay, you know, there's still a lot of good in the world. And as as much as we are in a culture where it just seems like there's so much egocentrism and, you know, me-centric culture that we're in, I just seeing a lot of people that are like, no, if I'm going to put what I have going on aside and I'm going to step into somebody else's world and make a difference. Yeah. Well, you you mentioned our topic for today. We're we're talking about investing in young people, yeah. and specifically young people that are not your kids. And so, as we were talking about this, we were thinking of coaches or teachers or step parents, uh, foster parents, and yeah. we want to talk about what it looks like to be successful in that role. And it, it, there's a lot that we have to draw from being in youth ministry, being foster and then adoptive parents and you have had two step parents well more than two but two primary step parents uh, <laughs> on either side and so yeah um, there, Roller there's just a ride. <laughs> um but there's so many people that are investing or need to invest in the next generation and this is so important because if we look throughout history culture has been kept strong by the family unit and and, and tribes that we're yeah. investing in the next generation. You think about sitting around the fire at night, telling stories of their history and, yeah. and teaching the young people life skills like hunting and fishing and farming and, and making homes and tents. And that's not our culture today. If you look at today's culture, like the average school age children child spends less than 30 minutes a week talking to their dad, but they spend an average of 42 hours between TV and their phones and video games. And so it's so skewed towards other influence. Absolutely. It's definitely an influence imbalance there. More than that. We have a, we have an epidemic in our country, like one fourth of kids in our country um, do not have their dad in the home. Mm -hmm. And this is like three times we are the, We are the country with the highest percentage of kids who do not have a dad at home. It's three times the world Mm, average. Isn't that amazing? You wouldn't think that given our, I mean, just given all all that we have going on in our, just in our, in our country and the opportunities and um, just even the values that we oftentimes propagate, you would think that there would be a greater percentage of dads that are staying in the home and parents that are staying together. 
Well, here's what happens. And and the statistics I'm going to share for dads, um, because that's where the epidemic is. But uh, in a home where there's not a dad, um, children are 10 times more likely to abuse chemicals, drugs, alcohol. Mm-hmm. Um, girls who live in fatherless homes have a 100% higher risk of suffering obesity than girls that have a dad present. And teen girls are without a dad in the home are four times as likely to get pregnant before the age of 20 than mm-hmm. in homes where there's a dad in the home. And so uh, fatherless kids are 20 times more likely to end up in prison or jail um, and 11 times more likely to, to exhibit violent behavior. And so it's, it's a crisis. And the thing is, like, a lot of people that are listening don't have opportunity to fix their family. They, maybe they're not the dad or the mom, or maybe their family doesn't need fixing. But here's, here's the good news is that all of us have opportunity to invest in the next generation and, and kids that have a mentor in their life, someone pouring into them. Those metrics and, and every metric of, of health and success in life goes the wrong way without a dad in home. But with a, with a mentor in their life, those begin to correct and, and be where they need to be pointing those kids towards social health, towards financial health, towards spiritual, physical health. Everything begins to change. Yeah, and so actually I want to just touch back on some of our early conversation because like I'm I'm not going to prop up Enzo too much because, you know, I, this isn't about Enzo, but honestly, he has an amazing dad, he has an amazing family, and what you see him doing just down with the hurricane, I honestly I was really inspired by just his uh, fortitude in doing that. And um, and you do see such a difference when, as you mentioned, not just a dad in the home, but mentors and really just thinking about <clears throat> our reasoning for opening up Jungle Gym, which yeah. Enzo is a part of. So that's why I'm propping him a little bit because, you know, he's one of our boys. Yeah. But um, and, and of course, he's been mentored to a certain capacity through Caleb, you know, as his coach. And so um, we see a lot of these young men that have been mentored by older young men, if you will. And the things that they're doing is just amazing. But um, through the gym, just seeing even with our coaches, how they're taking so seriously um, investing in these kids, not just through coaching classes and doing private sessions, but even when I think about our, our pre-K coach, Shane, that during the hurricane, he went to some of those families' homes just to check on his kids, you know, just to say, hey, I'm, I'm here for you. And, um, you know, and that's just such a beautiful thing to see. And even when, when we, when I, which I'm typically the one that interviews coaches, new coaches, I always tell them, look, this the time that you spend with them, these young kids, may be the only time out of the week that they get any edification, any affirmation, any yeah. words of encouragement. Um, they're looking at you as not not just a coach, but definitely a role model yeah. and just somebody that they want to aspire to be like. So, you know, that's when you have that platform, that's something that you do want to take seriously because you never know who's watching you. Yeah. And even just that hour a week that they're in that kid's life makes such a huge difference. No, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we need to, we need to well, go Well, I'll there. just say, I mean, like you mentioned that I've had a few step parents and, um, and I'm not going to go into all of that business um, on this podcast, but I will say that um, when I was young, I'm just going to throw this out there. When I, I still remember when I was in fourth grade, like I totally fell in love with my fourth grade teacher. He's just so amazing. He was just such an encourager. And at that juncture in my life, my, my yeah. you know, my family situation, my par- parental situation was um, far from ideal. And so just having a, a teacher that really just um, just saw so much potential in me. And actually, he's the one that said, hey, you need to try pole vaulting (laughs) of all things and I did try that that was okay not Not a lot of fourth graders going out no well I don't you know it's a Florida it was a Florida thing back then I guess but then um just also getting me more into sports which none of my parents not uh, that you know none of the people that were in my life that were influential um, even encouraged me in any, even academically or when it came to sports um, or any extracurricular activities. So really just having somebody that took notice and said, yeah. you know, I really I really think you could be good at this. And and what a difference the trajectory of somebody's life, what, you know, how different that is just because somebody was willing to speak into it. Well, it's interesting. If you look at the statistics and, and every metric of health goes south without a dad in the home. But if every kid had a mentor... 
like that in their life or more than one. I mean, it takes more than one. It takes, it takes parents, it takes teachers, it takes coaches, it takes big brother, big sister, uncles. Like The opportunity to invest in the next generation, if, if every kid had people investing in them, we fix the big issues in our country with teenage pregnancy and drug use and gangs and abortion mm-hmm. and all those things, they, <laughs> that's how they're fixed. Yeah. Not not through more spending, but through people stepping up. And yeah. so it's so important. There's a there's a movie that uh, we enjoy, Chasing Mavericks. And, and you yeah. reminded me of this yeah. and um, where where you have Frosty played by Gerard Butler based on a true story. But he, this kid, Jay, comes into his life and kind of attaches himself to to Frosty because he's a he's a surfing legend that. Yeah. um Jay wants to emulate and and Frosty doesn't really want much to do with this kid but um his wife Brenda said to him look there are all kinds of sons some are born to you and some just occur to you yeah and encourage Frosty to take this kid under his wing and it's this story about how this kid with ra- being raised by his mom his his life is transformed by by Frosty's investment in him yeah absolutely and I mean what's interesting with that story too is that Jay was roughly in high school I think when he and Frosty kind of came into connection and then finding out that Jay died what was it right before his 22nd birthday the day before so you just you Uh, just don't know if you haven't seen the movie you're sorry but uh, you've had 10 years to watch it (laughs) you've had 10 years to watch it so yeah time to (laughs) yeah time to pull it up and do a family night or something. But yeah, yeah, but you know, the thing is, I think that oftentimes we underestimate the value that we have in the lives of other people, whether it's our peers or the next generation. And I I will say for myself, having grown up in the environment that I grew up in, there were so many um, parents of friends that I had that honestly impacted me for the better as far as inspiring me to want to be more than I was than um, other family members that were in my life that potentially could have had more influence. And so, I, as you say, it's, you know, some people, some kids you choose and some kids choose you. And, uh, and, and that's, I think that's true wherever you're at. Yeah. And so really just kind of being sensitive to what you have to offer those around you and recognizing that, I, we all have something to offer, number one, but also recognizing the need there. Yeah. Sometimes we want to ignore it because it's, you know, kids Kids can be difficult. They're not, especially kids who have been messed up by somebody else, they can be well, difficult and, you know, they're going to bring things with them, attitudes and other, and, and even self-doubt and self-deprecation. They're going to bring a lot of things to the table and you're going to see certain behaviors that would kind of lend to wanting to distance yourself rather than step into their space. And I, I guess just thinking about our topic for today, that's really what I want to hone in on is just encouraging everyone to step into somebody's space. Yeah. Well, most of the time when you have opportunity to pour into a kid, I, I think of the Chasing Mavericks movie where Jay was drawn to Frosty because he didn't have a dad in his life. And if you have opportunity to step into a kid's life, there's there's going to be that baggage. If if it, you're adopting a kid or fostering a kid or a big brother, big sister program, like those kids have been hurt, <laughs> and they they're bringing that hurt into that mentoring relationship, or they're drawn to someone because they're lacking. And so, yeah, like you said, it's it's not going to be easy. And so, it's really important to love them where they're at. You start with accepting them for who they are. Well, usually, I I think just based upon what I've seen, usually some sort of mentoring or investing relationship happens because you're you're kind of in the same. You have some similar interests, like even going back to this movie, which we're not getting any money by propagating <laughs> this movie. So I just want to clarify that, but it just lends so well to the illustration that uh, this kid Jay was really interested in surfing and then so was Frosty. And so he really recognized that I can learn so much from this guy and he wanted to learn. He had a hunger for that. And I think that there are a lot of young people around us that they, they'll, they'll find certain things about you that they long for for themselves. And it may be a commonality when it comes to a sport or it might be just that they look at you and you have such drive um, and you you have such discipline, such structure in your own life, or you have certain qualities about you that they just would, they desire it so much for themselves. 
And um, when you're willing to open yourself up to, hey, this lends to what I already have going on and I can make a difference in this life, just how different that life could become. Yeah. Well, I tell our coaches at the gym all the time that ninja isn't the primary thing we do. And we're a ninja gym. It's filled with ninja obstacles. But that's the primary thing we do is build character, is invest yeah. into into other people. <clears throat> and and the sport is the vehicle for that investment. They're, they're learning about the sport, but along the way, we want the students to learn life skills and, and values and, and develop character. And it's it's a, an, a common bond. It's an, an excuse to have those conversations about real life and, and who you're becoming. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I, <clears throat> I just even think about so many parents in our ninja community that have been willing to uh, take some of these other kids that are in the ninja community and let them travel with them. Yeah. And even, even Caitlin and Caleb, our kids, um, as well as their now spouses have been the beneficiaries of that as well. But I also, like I think about, and I'll let you touch on this because you know a little bit more about it than I do, but I think about some young people in our community, Grady and Nikolai, who only graduated high school, what, back in 2020? Yeah. And, uh, which wasn't much of a graduation for anybody that knows about 2020. It was one of those things, but I'm just seeing where they're at now because they had been invested in, they were invested in by um a young man named Ian and he really poured into them and they had a lot of stuff happening, you know, at their home. And, uh, and then of course we've invested in them as well, but they just where they're at right now and um, just having that mentorship and somebody that cared enough about them to spend time with them um, where it's taken them today. So if you want to yeah, touch base well, on that. I love yeah. seeing how they're carrying that forward where they go into a group home, which is kind of a last stop foster home for some of these kids. They've been kicked out of every other program and they go in, they, they were going in on a weekly basis. Now they're going in two, three times a week and, and mentoring some of these kids. And even Nikolai, you, you, like I said, when you when you invest in a kid who's been hurt, you, all the junk comes to the surface. And so one of these kids was swinging some kind of metal bar outside and the, the group home uh, workers said, everyone get inside. And Nikolai went out and ran to this kid and blocked the swing of this bar and grabbed the kid. And as the kid ran, ran down the street, he, he ran away. Um, he was Nikolai was told, let him go. And Nikolai said no. And Nikolai ran after him and caught him and gave the kid a hug and brought mm -hmm. him back. And uh, I don't know where Nikolai is learning this stuff, but it just is intuitive Well, he was going to go into the military. <laughs> so I think that, that has, he has a little bit of a mentality there. But, but, but he understands yeah. that it's you're going to have to deal with the junk. Yeah. And it's not easy. And, you know, when we went into adopting kids, which was um, preceded by fostering these kids, we were told that when the issues rise to the surface, when they start acting out, that's a good sign because that means they're comfortable in the home. They're comfortable with the relationship enough to let down their guard, to unmask and to allow their issues to rise to the surface. The honeymoon period is over. Now you get to see this kid for who they really are and you're going to love the kid. You got to love them through that junk and through the mess. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I think the greatest gift that any young person or any, any person in general can give you is their trust. And so when they trust you, they trust that they can share anything with you and you're not going to judge them. Um, you're, you're going to take it in. You're going to advise them in a healthy manner and you're still going to love and care about them. That, that really, it, that saves a soul, so to speak. You know, it, yeah. it really opens them up to, okay, maybe this world isn't the place that I thought it was. Maybe I'm not the person I thought I was. Maybe I'm not the loser I thought I was. Or th maybe I'm not quite as messed up as I think I am. Maybe I can be better than I am. Yeah. And so when we give, you know, when, when somebody can trust us and then we give our time and attention to that person and not just invest in them and being, I won't say a counselor or just a listener, but I think also when we see p potential in them and we try to extract that. And as you mentioned earlier, you brought up just the skills. Once upon a time, the family unit, it was a lot of skills that were invested in by the dad. And so, you know, kids kind of grew up feeling like, regardless as to what happens, I have a masonry trade, you know, that yeah. I can step into or carpentry or um, mechanics or like there was some tangible trade. Now we see so many young people, all their self-worth is how many likes do I get? You know, where it's yeah. my presence on social media, how many people, how many people hang out with me? Um, and, 
it's just such a different world that we live in and a lot of that is because all of our self-worth is very much me centric so like what what i can get what i can take from the world around me rather than being poured into and seeing my life through the lens of um, being filled and having purpose in who i am and then taking that and being able to pour into someone else and help them find purpose as well yeah you know so i mean i think that we just look through the lens so much of the the tangible the things that we can touch in the here and now versus the intangible like like we have a tangible world that we live in but there's also an intangible world we're going to step into you know after all this is gone and we just don't know when that's going to happen but what we do know is that the people that we invest in when we step into that intangible space and we see god face to face that what we're going to see is the fruit of everything that we invested in people wise I mean, like there's that old saying, you know, you never see a hearse or you never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. Yeah. So we can't take anything, you know, we can't take any of the tangible things with us that we can touch in the here and now. But um, the lives that we've invested in, I, that's that's what people are going to remember you for. And that's what you're going to experience when you step into standing before the creator. I think that's an important realization is that every life you come in contact with has a divine purpose that's been given that to them by God. Yeah. And not everyone's going to live out their purpose. But we have an opportunity to help them discover that. Discover what God has created them for. And I I think of even raising our own kids. And we say our kids, but this realization that wait a minute, even our biological kids aren't our kids. They're they're yeah. ultimately God's kids. And yeah. we're just stewards they're they're in our home for 18 years or a few more uh, and <laughs> <laughs> well we're on our last but, one in the home right now so yeah we're, we're uh, um at that point but even kids that come into your life you don't know how long they're in your life yeah and you you may have a few weeks a few months a few years and maybe they're with maybe they become part of your life for the rest of your life but yeah but some kids are are passing through and and we need to steward that time well and recognize that we have this time to connect them to god's love and god's purpose and and ultimately they're in god's hands well so i i just want to clarify that when we say kids we're basically talking about anyone younger than us I mean, yeah, really, because forty-year-old whippersnappers. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't going to throw our ages out there, but, but in all fairness, there are a lot of people that um, that go through things, and I, I just think about some that have lost their parents, and um, I'll even just say, like, not too awful long ago, a young man that did lose his mother, and how difficult that was for him, and uh, the time that I spent with him, and how challenging. Just the things that he he was processing and how he was handling it it was very self-destructive and really trying to talk him off of that cliff um you know was really difficult and i i think even now he still is is kind of on a little bit of a roller coaster ride but having stepped into his space and um and just bearing his hurt with him but then also being able to give him, you know, some practicals as far as like moving forward. I just think that that's when we talk about investing in people, I don't think that there's an age, uh, yeah. an age specific. But I do think that when we think about the next generation and even people that are, I will say, teenagers through maybe their 30s, it just seems like that. And I won't say that generation because that's a broad scope of age ages, but we're just seeing so much that people are not able to handle pain in their life in the same way. They're not perseverant. Yeah. They're uh, many are turning to meds or self harm or, you know, a variety of things. And so really being willing to step into what they have going on. And, and even sometimes it's like stepping into their mess, you know, or hugging a porcupine yeah. or you're going to bleed a little bit with them. Yeah. Well, I think the big question in facing a situation like that would be, what do I have to give? What what can I say in response to this hurt, to this need? I haven't experienced that exactly. But the biggest thing is just being present, being present in their life. You may not have all the answers to the problems. And I think of when we brought kids into our home and the stuff they were dealing with, far different than my upbringing. 
And so you you can self doubt and like what what can I say in response to this? When someone shares with me the kind of abuse they've endured, what can I share in response? And the thing is, you it's not your job to fill someone else's cup. It's your job to empty your cup into theirs. And so mm. God's given you some some things that you can share and and just your presence, just being there is I think 90% of it. Just the, someone knowing that you care, that you yeah. are there for them, you're a listening ear. Um, you don't need to have all the answers, uh, but you do need to care. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, so if you were to wrap this up with like some practicals yeah what how would you do that as far as you know those that are listening in and they're thinking okay i I do want to make a difference and obviously we've made it very apparent that it's not about how old you are how young you are we all have the ability to invest in the lives of other people um what are some practical things that you would say to number one look for and then and then stepping into someone's space some practical things that you would suggest so the first one and it's it's what we've said the, our whole time together. The first one is just love. I, I saw this video of a Nigerian math teacher. And every kid, before they came into the door, he had a different handshake, dance, flip around, booty bump, and, and for every, a different handshake for every single kid. And they were so excited to encounter their teacher as they head into the room. And he said, the more your kids love you, the more they understand your subject. Mm. And so if you have that's something good. to impart, yeah, something good. to teach... It's got to start with love, with them knowing that you care. Mm-hmm. Um, I, another huge one, and again, this has been woven into our conversation, is is affirmation. Yeah. Um, most of the time, you're dealing with somebody that is starving for affirmation. Yeah. Outside affirmation from a real person, outside of the likes. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we can we can go down a lot of dark paths to get likes. Yeah. And and that feeds that affirmation need. And so that's why you see so many young people, so many people in general, people like in general, they're was, living yeah, kind of for the, the, the likes, which you can be canceled tomorrow. With, mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Um, but but affirmation. And so even in here's a here's a practical tool in correcting someone. Yeah. So let's say you have a kid in your home. You're you're adopting a kid. You have a step kid. You have whatever. But they they have a responsibility let's say sweeping the floor and they've they've not done a perfect job so what the way to correct that is through a compliment sandwich yeah you, well finding finding what they did do right yeah so finding something positive they they missed everything under the table <laughs> so you need to address that but you're going to surround it with two positive things hey i'm so glad you did this without asking you took the initiative um hey just would you mind getting the crumbs under the table? And but you know what? I, I so value the contribution that you make to this family. Boom, you've surrounded it with two positive things and it just it helps the <laughs> the correction go down a whole lot well, easier. Well, I think, you know, you brought up love, which a lot of people think is an emotion, but it's actually an action. And then you brought up affirmation and I think that the that those two together partnered are really what make people feel valuable. They can tell, uh, people can tell whether or not you're judging them, you know, based on their circumstances or you just have an attitude towards them. Like you're like, okay, I'm going to talk to you, but I really don't want want to talk to you or I really don't want to teach you or I really don't want to have a relationship with you because I know you're messed up. And and people sense that we, we can sense a vibe. And so I think that those two things make people or make young people and of all ages feel like, wow, okay, I'm valued. You're treating me with with this affection, but then also you're affirming me in whatever it is. And I used to tell the kids all the time, and Leah's quoted me on this, and I've had some other young people quote me that I always say, you know, never let a compliment go unstated. Yeah. And as as you know, even when we were in Dallas, I was meeting all these people, and I just, like some of them had some interesting clothing on and some hats or makeup or whatever, but, you know, I always try to, I always try to find, like that's how they're, they're, that's their self-expression as far as uh, like wild hair or whatever. And I mean, as long as it's not too super crazy, you know, like you're not going to stab somebody with your hair or whatever, but I'll leave that one alone. But just to say that I always try to look at everybody through that lens that what can I say to you? Um, that's just going to make your day. Well, and I think you made a few new best friends uh, from that. 
Oh, yeah. In particular, the one at, yeah, Botanical Gardens. And, oh, and the gal at the airport as, when we were on our way out of town. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And so, yeah. Anyway, but... So they're going to come visit and stay at our house or something? I, well, we didn't, we didn't <laughs> get that connected. But, but anyway, just to say, you know, sometimes you can just really tell by people's demeanor, um, if they're hurting or they're or they're processing, yeah. like they have stuff going on up here that they just, it, it's it it really is preoccupying them and diverting them from either becoming more than they are, or it's diverting them from even being able to be that self sustaining in any capacity, you know, because the head can be just such a dangerous place. So I think just kind of like, um, you know, stepping into that as I've mentioned multiple times, then making a difference in those areas is positive. Yeah. Okay, so back to the practical. Okay, so uh, this one is specifically for um, someone in a step-parent or foster adopt parent situation that the new kids need to be treated the same as the old kids. So we have some kids that we brought into our home that in a previous foster home, they had been treated far inferior to yeah. the biological yeah. kids. And that is so hurtful, yeah. so damaging, to say, well, you're you're less than these kids, and, yeah. and and with that case, they never feel like they belong. They never feel part of the family. Yeah. Well, and and that's a, a really a very different situation than just investing in kids in a general sense. Once you take them into your home, it's it changes the game, you know. So. Um, yeah, yeah, so just to say that, uh, to clarify that, you know, kids that you're investing in, you're not necessarily going to treat them the same or give them the same benefits as your biological kids. Yeah. But Another thing that's important is we talked about kids have, everyone has a divine purpose. And so in a, as much as you can, you need to give kids a smaller purpose, give them responsibility. If it's a coaching situation, how can you raise up junior leaders to assist somehow, assist younger students? If it's if it's someone you bring into their home, it's important that they have chores, that they have a part that, that helps people feel a part of what's going on. Like yeah. I, I have a contribution to make. It, it it's points them to the larger contribution they have to make in society. And it's, it's where we learn to give back, to contribute is in the home, in the team, in the in the club, that's where in the classroom, that's where they begin to learn those those the gifts and the value that they have to add. Yeah. Well, so I think I'm just going to wrap this up by saying that you know the bottom line is everybody needs to have a sense of purpose, and oftentimes, depending upon how broken you are from your past, it's really hard to navigate those waters and find that purpose again. And um, and so really when we invest in the lives of other people, that's what we're doing. We're making them feel valuable, but we're also, if we give them some, um, some tangible things that they, some skills, um, when we extract certain things from them, then they start feeling like they have a sense of purpose, whether it's, whether it's like you said, the chores, but also I just think about others that have come into our lives that have had artistic skills or, woodworking skills or other skills and how many young guys that we've had at the gym that you've taught how to make obstacles how to work you know the saw and you know other things and um, you've given them that opportunity whether they make mistakes or not you've given them that opportunity and so everybody finding that sense of purpose and that really does come through investment yeah. and what we what we've always hoped is that the family unit would be the greater the greatest investor but what we're seeing is in our culture that that's not the case so with that, I, I, I guess, you have any final thoughts? I do. I would say that the mindset would be this. What if you had the opportunity to babysit, uh, to, to mentor, to, uh, to nanny a prince for a king? Mm. And the king entrusted you with the stewardship of his son, who is one day going to be the king. How would you treat that kid, even if he had issues, even if he was spoiled, even if he didn't want, how, what would you do to shape him with the mindset that you're doing it for the king, that mm -hmm. that's not your kid? You have a responsibility to, to shape, to mentor, to influence in a positive way for a greater purpose. Yeah, that's, that's how good. we need to treat kids. They're children of God. They're entrusted to us whether biologically or through a mentoring or investment or coaching opportunity we need to understand that these are these are God's children there <laughs> that 
we have this opportunity to point them back to him, to back to his love, back to his purpose. And that's the job we've been given. And if, if we're able to step up in that, we begin to heal the issues in our nation. It's a big calling. It's a big responsibility, but we shouldn't feel inadequate or insecure. We should step into what God has already given us and walk in that and grow in that so that we can begin to see our society move in the direction it needs to. Yeah. Well, that's really good insight. So with that, I think I'm just going to say, let's wrap it up. Do you want to tell everybody where they can find us? Oh, yeah. You can find us on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on YouTube, on Google Podcasts, on Amazon Podcasts. We're all over the place. We're all over the place. (laughs) So be sure to like, subscribe, (laughs) comment. You know all the stuff to do. It helps us out, helps us uh, get out to a wider audience. Yeah. And thanks again for joining us. All right. We'll see you again real soon.